some of our favorite garden projects have absolutely nothing to do with the flowers that you see here. But without them, the garden wouldn't be the same, we wouldn't have as much fun out here, and we probably wouldn't even enjoy it as much. So today I thought we would give you a quick look at four of the things that we've done recently that we wish we had done a lot sooner. One of the best things we ever did for this garden was paint this building. Uh, when we bought the house, this building was white. Inside is where we sow all the seeds. We moved the laundry in here. The bikes are in here because that's how we go everywhere in Denmark is on our bike. Um, we decided to paint this back in May because when we sat up there and we looked back at the house, all we saw, we didn't see garden. So he even said, what did I just say? I said, we looked back at the house. We couldn't even enjoy the garden because of these white buildings that were standing out. So we painted it black. Here in Denmark, Sweden too, black is a real um, summer house, real summer color, which is really strange. But uh, black, where I grew up, nothing's painted black. It looks like it was burnt or something. But here, black is a big color. We absolutely love it. So painting this building was one of the best things that we ever did. And while we were painting, we also painted the greenhouse. This thing was silver, aluminum, really bright sun. Um, this thing was silver. It came with the house, so it's a little cracky, a little sketchy in places. Some of this... This has been here a really long time. It does what it's supposed to do. We, we replaced a bit of the, the glass where we could, but we painted this metal and it was, it was super smart, super easy. We, we took all the glass out. We gave it a good wash, sanded some of the parts that had a lot of like rust and uh, what do you call it? Moss and things like that growing on it. And then we just spray painted it. Hi. I think we had 12 cans of black spray paint and we went to town on this one weekend and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now it really blends in. It looks like it belongs, it matches the building. Everything just works a lot better. And we had seen new ones that were black, like black wrought iron and they were so crazy expensive, thousands of US dollars, like 8,000 Danish kroner. And that was just in insane, crazy, crazy, crazy. Because nothing's wrong with this building, it just needed a little love, like a like a eucalyptus over there. Give a little love and that uh, things will come back. So this was one of the best things we did. Another great thing that we did was the pergola up here. So this pergola, first you'll have to ignore the wisteria <laughs> that is absolutely taking over. How many times have we cut this? I think... Too many. Yeah, too many times a year we have to trim this guy. Um, We'll do it again soon. So ignore it for now. Pretend like everything's perfect like it should be on YouTube. Uh, this pergola. We, we've talked about it before. When we moved into this house, this was covered in plastic, like this plastic uh, ceiling. I hear a snail. Hmm. We'll have to give him away. So it was covered with this plastic and it was hot. When the sun comes, so the sun rises here behind us and it sets over there. So you're getting this wonderful evening sun. And don't forget here in the summer, in, in the Nordic countries, we have very, very, very late evenings. So 10, 30, 11, you're still getting baked by the sun up here. So we really couldn't use it. So what we did, we took all the plastic off. Actually, we had to. <laughs> there was a big windy storm once and it blew some of the plastic loose. So our option was we either fix it or we just tear it down. And we were like, tear it down. So we ripped off all the plastic planted two wisterias. One of these, this was for your birthday, Lars. This one was for Lars's birthday from Malazzi and I. And the other one we planted, we want them to really take over and give that, that shade. We painted it black because it was gray, the same color as the front of the house. It, it was this gray just color. Painted it black so it matches everything else. We really love it now. We also took down this building over here. There was actually a tree with a hole in it. No, excuse me, a building with a hole in it. Not the tree. I see you laughing, Lars. There was a building with a hole in it and the tree was growing up from the hole. Back here was where the previous owners kept like the shovel, the lawnmower, things like that. It was a great building, but also in that storm, that started getting kind of crackerjack. So we had to take that down. Um, since then, we extended the hydrangea and have just been so happy. If you'll come on up, Lars, I'll show what we use this for. 
Um, we don't use it for sweeping, so don't, don't show the floor. We need to sweep. Um, we have a table and chairs up here. We left the plastic here. That way, if it is raining, you can still sit up here and have a little, a little huga. Huga is a great Danish word meaning cozy. We don't have this word in, a, I'm from the States. We don't have a translation for this in American English anyway, but it means cozy. So we have a little- is so good. Yeah. So we have a little huga up here. They had also, the previous owners had put in this glass, which is really great because it keeps sort of the wind away behind the laurel tree. It's very, very hugely up here. And in true Danish fashion, a oh, horseshoe. Wow. You found that. Yeah. When we first moved in, this was hanging on the... That, that was, was a bird. That blackbird. Living up in our was too. So the, um, this is a real like old... Just a blackbird again. <laughs> You're so... I grew up on a farm, y'all. This could have been a rat. You never know. Uh, no, but, but here in Denmark, long story short, a lot of old houses, you'll find a horseshoe for good luck. So we moved in and it was hanging up there. Cool, no problem. Um, we don't really... We're not so superstitious, but it has a long history. Who knows how long it's been here, so we leave it there. But, yeah. Super duper happy with the pergola. Can't wait to have more hugely aftens as we sit up here. So I'm actually walking on one of the best things we should have done in the garden like a long time ago. We uh, actually just this year made these uh, new paths. We had uh, our lawn is really, or our garden in general is really small. But we, uh, we had a lawn here going all the way here and also this, believe me or not, believe me or not, but this uh, also was a lawn over there. There wasn't any dahlia flower bed. All this was lawn when we moved in. We moved in five years ago now, but we talk forth and back. We want to change the garden into more like places how you can yeah, go and discover the garden. So we decided the lawn had to go because it was just wet all the time anyway in winter. We could barely walk on it before you slip and slide. So we actually just took, uh, yeah, we wanted to make it like a middle flower bed. You can walk around it. So forth and back we talk what would the be, uh, best option be a lot of people have just like crossed granite uh, underneath so there's like crossed uh, granite four centi uh, centimeters under we took all the of course all the um, turf up and then we took we chose on a, just also to have a great contrast to the to the greenery and to all the flowers which we, we opt for this option with white um, granite scale it's called in Danish but it's like small stones also because it would um, drain any overflow of water if we have in Denmark it rains a lot sadly so if it comes too much water we could also get rid of some of the water and it's really nice to walk on easy to to pick that there's no weed carpet under but we do have a little bit of weeding but if you do it uh, quite often once a week go and if there's a little bit because the per perennials they do throw the seeds in here but it's actually working really well having these so we can walk around it without even in the rain without being wet we can walk on these um, so it's really a nice contrast to the to the uh, flower beds over here and all these stones we also get a lot of questions about those we didn't buy them we didn't go and <laughs> to a farm and ask we could find some stones they were in the garden up in the back we have a uh, like a stone bed or what you would call like almost a wall of all these old stones so it's a nice we feel it's really nice um, contrast to the flower bed you have this overlay of these old stones and then we have crossed granite here black crossed granite to also avoid a little bit of weeds that uh, it does come weeds uh, once in a while but it's quickly to maintain actually and then over to these white stones and then the the new raised flower bed here in the middle that we started on actually and it's not not a lie in february we started turning all the turf here also the trampoline we kept here for our son to jump on eventually there will be some project there maybe with a huge tree is our dream but then we can walk around and see more like flower beds from all different angles so it's really it works really well i think so in october two years ago we removed a really old uh, heads we had here. It was a array mix of different kind of uh, plants and it was really uh, wide, uh, really old and 
how to go in here in, in Danish, uh, the Danish gardens here. We often have to cut the heads three times a year. It's a lot of work and all the cuttings would fall down in the perennial. It was just not a fun project to clean up. So we talked to the neighbors. We have really nice neighbors. So we talked about what could we do. So we decided on building this really nice uh, fence. Um, we did it with my dad one autumn day and it took all weekend. We, we did everything from scratch, put the posts down, used concrete, and then we put all these uh, pieces of wood on. And to give a really nice contrast, we, we painted it actually black. Um, so it, go, it goes a nice contrast towards all the flowers. And it's so nice. We really, this is one of my favorite things we really did, we should have done when we first moved in. It's because you're the hedge cutter. The other side of this fence is actually green. Yeah. yeah, we painted this fence twice. Yeah. We painted it green because the neighbor wanted green. Mm. So cool, they're an elderly couple, mm. no problem. So we painted the whole thing green and then we couldn't take it. So we painted our side black. Yeah. You could have left it also wooden color, but we do think black really gives a nice contrast and it really ties in with the rest of the black. With the black uh, shed, we have the pergola and the, uh, the greenhouse as well. So we do like uh, black. It really fits in, in with the garden theme we already have. Yeah, and one of the best things about it, we've had a lot fewer snails since we got rid of this mixy, mixy hedge that was here. Now our snail problem is still a problem, but it's no longer a major problem. And they did really go into one of my favorite perennials, the lupins. <gasps> Um, and we really see a difference now. It's not a lot of uh, snails anymore. We do have a, quite a lot of snails because when it's wet, we have snails with a shell on that has stripes. It's called volsnail. It's a very uh, special snail to right here. So they do come in, but as long as the perennials are really grown up tall, they don't eat too much. But the lupins, they always really loved, but we can see it's a different uh, effect now with the fence. So that's really nice as well. And then we do want to have some hollyhocks to kind of uh, soften up the fence a bit. So they're gonna grow here, the ones we did in the greenhouse, they're growing now, they're gonna come here in different colors, which is all really great for the bees as well. So they're gonna be tall as me uh, growing here. So that's gonna be nice. And what's that animal that we have every year that digs under the fence? It's like a, yeah, an evasive animal, almost like a badger that grows from the neighbor. It comes from the street somehow, and we are in the row house, so it just ducks on under all the yeah, neighbors. Yeah, it comes from the forest yeah. somewhere. And then and, uh, they're quite invasive, gets a lot of uh, babies all the time. So What's they, it called? I forget. It's, uh, in, it's in Danish called a mohun, like a We'll put a dog. picture up of that. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, It's really um, gross. It's and it huge. really, it's invasive to uh, the nature of Denmark. So a lot of, if, yeah, hunters will uh, go and see how many numbers. They keep an eye on how many is living in Denmark. Yeah, but it has dug under last year. That's right. And then it heads over to the neighbor. It goes under through. The That's a fence under that ivy. So, yeah. But anyway, there's a little fun fact. Yeah, but here's our fence. So as I'm sitting here uh, putting this video together, I realized that we forgot to do an ending. I think we were just so fascinated by how much we liked the fence and the pergola that we just kept on gardening. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Let us know which of the projects that we've done recently is your favorite. If you have a favorite and maybe you don't have a favorite, maybe you have something that we should do next time instead. <laughs> so let us know that too. Anyway, thanks for watching. And now I'll get back to clipping this thing together.